Good morning and welcome back to the last lecture of the short course on microclimate for cultural heritage organized within the SOS Heritage Project. I'm Elena Verticchio and this lecture will focus on how to manage microclimate monitoring and control for cultural heritage. This is the last lecture of the course after the introduction on the microclimate for the sustainable conservation of cultural heritage and the lecture on the standards and guidelines on the microclimate for the preventive conservation. As you know, these are the 10 primary threats to vulnerable heritage objects. Among them, we have already seen that incorrect temperature and relative humidity levels and variations, together with radiations and pollutants, are the main agents that need to be monitored and controlled in order to limit climate-induced deterioration of the heritage materials that are sensitive to environmental conditions. In this lecture, we will summarize the main concepts behind the measurements of temperature and relative humidity. And we will discuss a rational approach to microclimate monitoring in conservation spaces. According to thermodynamics, temperature is related to the average kinetic energy of the molecules in a substance. In the right scheme, you can see a cool gas where collisions between the molecules are fewer and less energetic compared to a hot gas where collisions are more and more energetic. Since the temperature of an object is also exponentially proportional to the radiative energy that it can emit, in the bottom right picture is given an example of the measurements of the vertical thermal gradients of the air in a high ceiling church by using a thermocamera. Temperature can be measured through contact and non-contact instruments. In contact thermometers, the equilibrium is reached when the exchange of heat between the sensor and the surface stops. This kind of measurement can have various drawbacks, among which the difficulties in its applications on rough and delicate surfaces and the need to screen them from unwanted radiation potentially affecting the accuracy of the measures. Moreover, considering the high response time of these sensors, it should be always kept in mind that under dynamic conditions, the difference between the actual temperature and the measured value can be significant. Indirect measurements are based on the emissions of infrared radiation by the objects. Two types of instruments can be used to this scope. The non-imaging transducers, as the radiometric sensors shown in these slides, and those that reproduce the thermal image of the objects, such as the thermocameras. Radiometric measurements are based on the surface emissivity of the materials and measure the total power of the infrared radiation that reaches the sensors. A thermocamera is capable of reproducing the thermal image of the objects in false colors, associated with the different temperature values. Thermography can be used in the active mode, where the surface under investigation is heated to monitor temperature pattern emerging during the heating or cooling phases and showing, for example, local, local subsurface discontinuities due to the different heat transmission, and the passive mode, where the surface is observed during its natural conditions, either stationary or dynamic, allowing to recognize internal cold zones in masonries that might possibly be generated by water percolation, capillarity rise, or other causes. Passing to relative humidity, it is conventionally expressed as a percentage ranging from zero to 100, calculated as the ratio between the mass of water vapor in the air to the mass of saturated air, which is the maximum amount of water vapor that the, the air can hold at a given temperature. In saturated air, as shown in the bottom part of this slide, there is the equilibrium between vapor and liquid phases, and any addition of water vapor would result in the condensation. Thermohygrometers are the instruments used to measure the temperature and relative humidity of the air. These instruments are typically composed of two sensors, 
a platinum resistance sensor for measuring temperature and a thin film capacitive sensor for measuring relative humidity. The main problem of these instruments is the drift, especially in polluted environments. For this reason, the probe is often inserted into a filter that protects the sensors against their pollutions, dirt or droplets. However, the presence of the filter slows down the free exchange with the atmosphere and increases the actual time of response. Microclimate monitoring can be carried out through portable or fixed instruments. This picture shows an example of spot measurements taken in a room of the Roseborg Castle in Copenhagen, where the instruments were fixed to a tripod to measure temperature and relative humidity of the air at selected heights, respect representative of the air layer where the artworks are exposed. The decision-making process when planning a microclimate monitoring campaign involve at least three types of experts, including a conservator, a manager of the institution, and a conservation scientist. The process starts with the identification of the problem that needs to be addressed with the microclimate monitoring and the collection of all the information needed. The process ends with the implementation and revision, if needed, of the census configuration in the conservation spaces. In more details, the choice of the sensor should be guided following the recommendations provided by the European standards specifying the minimum requirements for sensors devoted to temperature and relative humidity of the air. The number of sensors, however, also depends on budget availability which should consider not only the cost for purchasing the instruments, but also the cost for their maintenance. The position of the sensors in the conservation space should be chosen according to general rules, which can be found in literature or guidelines based on consolidated practices. However, a standard on this topic has not yet been drafted, because this is usually an issue that should be customized based on a case-by-case -case approach. Finally, sensors deployment could be tested and refined through data analysis carried out by multidisciplinary experts with solid background in statistics and climate-induced risk assessment for cultural heritage objects. If you are keen to know more about this topic, you can find extensive explanation and discussion in two recently published papers, which you can easily access through the QR codes in this slide. This was the final lecture of this very short course. I wish to remind you again that should you have any doubt, please feel free to contact me through the emails that you can find on my Archit profile. I will be very happy to answer to all your questions. And thank you again for the attention.